Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Romans 5, 5 says, and hope, this hope, does not disappoint us. Amen. Why? Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has, what? Given, Given to us. Did we work for the Holy Spirit? Did we have to be good for the Holy Spirit? Oh, I hope he gives me the Holy Spirit. I'll be good. I'll be good. No. In Galatians, it says that we receive the Spirit by faith. By faith, by believing. Amen? And it goes on to say, God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given to us. When your hope is connected with his faith, there is no disappointment. There is no disappointment. Let me repeat that. When your hope is connected with his faith, there is no disappointment. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, remember that the love chapter? Somebody say the love chapter. It concludes with, and these three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Faith, hope, and love are like triplets. They're like sisters. They always run together. If you're hoping, you're believing. If you're hoping and believing, it's because you have encountered the love of God that He's poured out into your hearts by the Holy Spirit. Now that's how to live. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now I want to look at this hope as it was given to our friend Abraham. And I, I, I don't say that facetiously. Abraham is truly our friend. The Bible says that we have a faith like he had. In Galatians it says that we are the seed, the offspring of Abraham. Because he is the father of our faith. He believed and it was credited to him as righteousness. We believe and it was accredited to us as righteousness. We are saved because of our faith. The Bible says uh, it is by grace we are saved through faith and that not of ourselves. Well, let's turn to Hebrews chapter 6. Go ahead. And I want you to mark up your Bibles this morning. Please mark them up. Get them all wrinkly. And we're going to look at this hope as it was expressed by our friend Abraham. Hebrews chapter 6. Uh, let's start with verse 13. If you're there, say, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. When God made his promise to Abraham. Isn't that beautiful? When God made his promise to Abraham. Now, the Bible also says that Abraham was a friend of God. So God Almighty, God, the God of the universe, the creator. Somebody came in this morning and says, so, so what are we going to do today? I said, we are going to worship the God of all creation. Hallelujah. Amen. Who was that? I don't know. But I know I said that. <laughs> that God had a personal relationship with Abraham. And they, they talked and they, they walked together. And it says here that when God made his promise to Abraham. Oh, I can't leave that little line. When God made his promise to Abraham. Listen, if God made a promise to Abraham, he's also made a promise to you. His promise is that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. His promise is that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. His promise is that he'll, he will provide all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. His promise is that by His stripes you were healed. Yes. That's His promise to you. When God made His promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for Him to swear by, He swore by Himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. Now here's a man who's going to start to get on in years, and there, there is no babies in the cradle. But yet there was a promise Okay. And the promise was delayed, wasn't it? It was how long from the time that the promise was spoken to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 to, to the time that it was fulfilled with Isaac? How long was that? Huh? 25 years. Remember? Remember? 25 years. Could you imagine? Hoping, praying, believing, expecting something for 25 years? Can you relate to that? So how long have you been waiting? How long have you been hoping? How long have you been believing? Okay? When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. 
that what's happening here, a covenant is being made. Usually a covenant requires two parties, two people. And two people have to keep the covenant. They have to come together and many times they, they would even draw blood and say, listen, I'm going to be with you and you're going to be with me. We're blood brothers. That's where that came from, right? right. Listen, when, when, when enemies attack your land, I'm going to attack them. When they attack my land, you're going to attack those enemies, right? We're going to share everything that we have. We have made a covenant. Yes. And covenants were not easily broken. But by, by virtue of the fact that it's two human beings. God said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to swear by myself. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the, only, the only requirement in this covenant. Why? Because God doesn't fail. Amen? People fail. So he made this covenant saying, you know, it's going to be all up to me. And it says, verse 15, And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. After waiting what? After waiting years. what? Yeah, I would say 25 years is pretty patient. He received... Does it say that, that he was perfect for those 25 years? No, we see just from the reading that, you know, he made many mistakes. But he continued to trust God. He continued to believe. He continued to stand. Right? As you and I ought to do. Men swear by someone greater than themselves and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. So, in other words... The covenant that he made with us is, is, is in Jesus Christ. Jesus' Jesus's blood was shed. He said that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. That, that's why everybody who's ever believed in Jesus Christ was saved. Nobody has ever come to God and, say, Lord, and said, Lord, I surrender. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Nobody has ever come to him and not been saved because of this covenant that was made 2,000 years ago on the cross. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. That's why we're greatly encouraged. And here's our key verse, verse 19. We have this hope now as an anchor for the soul, yeah. firm and secure. It says it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus who went before us has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. We'll talk about a few of those things. But what I want to do is draw three things from what we just read. Three things about this hope. This hope is the hope that is eternal. This is the hope that God offers. This is not a hope that the world offers. Three things about this particular hope. Number one, it is a hope against all hope. Write it down. It is a hope against all hope. Romans chapter 4. Turn there with me real quick. Ready to say Go! We're going to continue to look at Abraham now in Romans chapter 4, verse 18. If you're there, say, I am hopeful. I am hopeful. It says in verse 18, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. I repeat and give the rest of you an opportunity to get there. Against all hope. Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, quote, so shall your offspring be. Verse 19, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 120 years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded, fully convinced, fully convinced that God had the power to do what he had promised. What has he promised you? Against all hope means that you are hoping and believing for something that in the natural seems hopeless. But because God has promised it, you stand on his faithfulness. You stand on the integrity of his word and 
Amen.